Hey, this is Mike from Real Black, and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time today. The last couple of videos that we've put up have been marathons. Out today is a new movie called uh, A Girl Like Grace. And um, the reason I'm doing this video, I forgot to mention it on the radio show today, which we'll upload later on. So a mini review, girl, A Girl Like Grace, I had a chance to see at last year's Urban World Film Festival. And... Um, you know, uh, basically, it's it's a um, nicely produced uh, film directed by Ty Hodges, and this is his third directing collaboration with uh, Megan Good. Uh, previously, they did uh, Miles from Home, which we showed. Uh, we had we hosted the Philadelphia premiere, and um, Video Girl, which was a straight to video, a DVD release with Megan Good. And um, Ty is a very talented young filmmaker. We've also shown his movie, uh, You, Me, and the Circus, uh, which he directed as well. Uh, so I was really excited to see A Girl Like Grace. Uh, you know, technically, it's on point. It's a, it's a sort of a coming-of-age story. Uh, Ryan Destiny plays Grace, and uh, she she's traumatized. Uh, and it's, it's in the trailer, as we find out, uh, she's still hurt by uh, the death, the suicide of her best friend. And, and she's having trouble in school and at home. Uh, she's being bullied by Raven Simone. And, and um, you know, she's she's gone through a lot, you know. So, so I'm trying not to give too much away. I mean, basically, I might be too old for this movie. I'll give it that much. Um, I, I didn't necessarily like the ride that it was taking me down. Um, it sort of is in the mold of like a precious, you know, where, where it's sort of like every sort of dark, it takes us in a very dark place that I didn't necessarily feel comfortable with. But I, I will say that the movie is worth seeing if only for the performance of Garcelle Beauvais. Um, you know, she... She as uh, she plays Grace's mom, and um, you know she chooses to use her Haitian roots, uh, and she speaks a lot of a uh, Haitian patois. Uh, she's sort of like the abusive mother character, but you know here's somebody who, you know, her performance really surprised me because, um, you know, we're so used to seeing her in the romantic roles and and uh, as fancy in the Jamie Foxx show, you know this film gave her an opportunity to really do something different and and I hope uh other producers and directors take note you know she really came through and um I was I was at the Q&A for the film apparently shot in a very short amount of time um you know you know I feel the Raven Simone for marketing standpoint is great to see her she she does a good job in her role but but she's entirely unbelievable to me as a high school kid and you know there, there there's some casting issues there which which go with you know it's one of those things you know in terms of uh, marketing a film you know do you get the unknown or you get the known and and take your chances so raven does a great job as as usual you know uh her personal politics aside she's a really good and talented performer i don't necessarily want to use this opportunity to to trash an individual film a film by filmmakers that i like but but when i saw the film it just pointed out something that i i, I did want to comment on which is um you know this uh the nihilism in black stories in the last year it just seems to be like a, a sort of a problematic issue for me and i don't know if it's because i'm getting older or maybe there's less for uh, young black people to look forward to in life, um, you know. So, but in the last year, I saw a girl like Grace. I saw Brotherly Love, which was directed by my friend Jamal Hill, and uh, Honey Trap, which was released by Array, my my partners, and they're all good films. But they all have incredibly dark endings, and it just made me wonder, like, what what's going on with younger people or maybe art in general you know for me you know I come from an era you know I'm, I'm in I'm 46 47 so 
you know, I grew up on My Bodyguard and Breakfast Club and, you know, Porky's and, you know, um, Weird Science and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the John Hughes stuff and, and the things that follow Revenge of the Nerds, you know. So, you know, and and all of those films depicted young people, but but in a very optimistic, hopeful way. And, and yeah, clearly there was a lot of exclusion. One of the most racist characters in all of movie history is Long Duck Dong from uh, 16 Candles. Oh, no more Yankee, my wanky. The donga need food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the time, we thought it was funny not realizing how painful and and invalidating it was, you know. But and also the problem there's no black characters in any John movie, John Hughes movies. So you're forced to identify with Molly Ringwald or Anthony Michael Hall or something like that. So so in in a way, what's happening now is better. But if it shows self destruction and like I said, this this nihilistic perspective like nothing matters your your life is gonna be fucked up regardless and you know you're you're destined to have this thing then then where's the hope and what what are ultimately our movies about i mean at least for me it's not necessarily about depicting the reality that we see in the world but projecting into our imaginations possibilities for our future three movies in a row were with extremely dark endings and i'm just wondering what that's about and you have dope which was a decent enough film, you know, teen sex comedy with black kids. Uh, but, and you know, for those for those who know, it's basically a takeoff on risky business. But uh, they use drugs instead of prostitution. But on a certain level, that's that's still a problematic film. Not to, not to say that every character has to be projected positively, but in view of prevailing stereotype. It bothers me a little bit that the lead character, in order to escape a situation, has to deal drugs. To me, I've seen that a gazillion times, and as entertaining as I found dope, it, it's still something that, that, I, that I have issue with. I was at a film festival about a year ago, and I saw the movie, but it was basically a, a French version of Dope. It was set in the French projects, and these two kids, 12, 13-year-old kids, find some hashish and start dealing drugs, and then they're forced to continue to deal drugs until one of them um, is rescued by a teacher and gets escapes the, escapes the ghetto. You know, I said, well, you know, I've seen this before, whatever, you know. And then I ran into one of our members, and she said, yeah, I was here earlier today, and I brought my son to see that film, and he loved it. And I said, really? And, you know, I've seen a lot of movies. You know, I'm not 12, 13 years old. What did he like about it? And he said, this is the first movie that he's seen that depicts a young black child his age who doesn't die at the end. I've realized, like, in, in filming our elders and putting them up on our channel, I realized that how, how few people actually have access to older people. And I, I was raised by my grandparents. So in in my heart and my mind, I always had a sense that I was gonna live for a long time. But I, I certainly understand in, in a lot of family s situations, life isn't as, as um, projected as guaranteed, you know? So, I get that, but you know what place does it have in our art? You know that's that's the question I'm, I have for you guys. And you know, it just seems to me now I haven't seen Thirteen. I don't go to I, Edge of Seventeen, all the, which looks like a very good film. You know, I don't necessarily go see coming of age movies uh, with white folks, but but I know that um, you know white folks they have Pitch Perfect, they have Glee. You know, there's and and those movies also show a broad representation of characters. I don't necessarily want to break it, go into the technology on those yet. And every artist is entitled to tell stories from their perspective, tell stories the way that they want to. But, but um, you know, I really would like to use the opportunity to just challenge people to just be a little more optimistic. Uh, you know, it seems 
from everything I can see that uh, this culture, this society is intent on eliminating people with my skin color and for artists to make movies that reflect what they consider their truth without looking at how it's going to be received by audience members and, and maybe it reinforces a perspective or belief system that they have that they're already getting through the media and things like that is, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, it, it, again, problematic for me. Now that we have the power to tell our own stories, are black coming of age stories helping to add to our self-destruction? Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Whenever you're going to have the depiction of black and white sexual relations, mm -hmm. they put in what I call the 3D effect. White power is a very uh, undeclared, silent, confident domination of the world in, in globalization terms. So they don't have to assert continually because we live, we live in their dictionary.